chocolate and cardiovascular disease. What a sweet deal. I mean, look at some of the most recent studies. Improved endothelial function with dietary flavanols. Eating a moderate amount of chocolate each week may be associated with a lower risk of stroke. And late this summer, a Cochrane Review found flavanol-rich chocolate and cocoa products may have a small but statistically significant effect in lowering blood pressure. We're going to be talking about the field of heart failure right now, but I want to introduce you to two of the paper's authors, Dr. Rodney De Palma, uh, Bart's Health NHS Trust, London Chest Hospital in London, and Dr. Roger Corder of Queen Mary University of London. First off, let's just go back to the whole broad picture of, of chocolate. How did you end up studying this particular subject, the whole idea that chocolate is healthy? It makes everybody happy, but what, what prompted that? Well, basically, I was doing research on red wine in the, uh, about 10 years ago and realized that, that the, it was the flavanols in red wine that were protective. But it's impossible to do clinical trials with red wine. So the o obvious solution was to find another flavanol-rich product. And that's why we focused on using dark chocolate, but using the sort of amounts uh, that uh, are found in a good tannic red wine. So something that we'd found associated with lower cardiovascular risk and higher longevity in southwest France. That, that was the background. And this is the sort of product and the end point was to really look at how that might be beneficial in a disease where endothelial function played a really main, major part in predicting risk and m mortality and risk of clinical events. Here was a way to test whether treating endothelial dysfunction really could make a difference. And thank you, Dr. Corder, for heading off into the chocolate area because I, I drink red wine, but I actually prefer chocolate if given the opportunity. Okay, so the paper itself that you're presenting here at the AHA meeting is High Flavanol Dark Chocolate Reduces NT Pro-BNP in Patients with Chronic Heart Failure. Tell me about the study. So essentially, following on from what Roger just said, um, we thought we'd collaborate in uh, doing a randomized study in heart chronic stable heart failure patients because most of the, the, the data that you've been mentioning just in, in your intro is observational. Um, as you said, um, there's a lot of evidence showing that endothelial dysfunction is a good marker of cardiovascular outcome. So we thought we would um, uh, study the stable heart failure prop population and use um, BMP, ent internal BMP, as a, as a primary outcome measure to see whether that was affected by ingestion of a specifically uh, manufactured high flavonal dark chocolate in comparison to a low flavonal dark chocolate. And the key thing to remember here is that the, the doses that we were using were much higher than had been used in any of the observational studies that have so far been carried out. So we're very clear that the, it's the, there is a, a clear dose relation ship in the sense that if you don't have a high enough dose, you, you see no effect at all in endothelial function or um, outcomes. Whereas if you use a high enough dose, then uh, you might do. And that's what we try to, to look at in this study. And we use a double blind um, um, crossover design uh, where patients were, 32 patients were randomized either to a high flavonol chocolate or a low flavonol chocolate and then crossed over to the opposite um, chocolate and we assessed them at four weeks, eight weeks and 12 weeks. Um, and we found that BMP was reduced by an average of 39%. Um, and some of the secondary outcome measures, including diastolic blood pressure, was reduced as well. So these are all very encouraging. Um, and does it suggest mechanism? Uh, no, I, I think that's something that we need to, to look into further. And that's that this is, a, if you like, a pilot study. Right. And uh, we're hoping to, to spur on with, a, with some more um, work on this to look at the, the mechanisms. No one really knows how the flavanols work. But um, clearly, one of the options is that there's a receptor that, um, that it acts on. Uh, but there are many other possibilities. Uh, but this is, this is really a sort of a pilot study, just to, to, as a sort of proof of concept to see whether flavanols do actually have a potential benefit. I mean, one of the criticisms of almost all of the trials that have been done and reported is heterogeneity. And is there, in, in your study, are you able to maybe control a little more for that because of the, the careful en enlisting of people in this trial? Yeah, I mean, although there are only 32 patients, I mean, it was a double blind crossover st uh, design. So that does, so the patients have acted as their own control. So that really um, makes the the, uh, the imputations in terms of the, the results um, uh, statistically significant. I mean, it's, uh, although they're small numbers, um, the, the, the design covers for that. 
we were very careful in selecting stable heart failure patients who'd had a history of objective evidence of coronary disease and who'd been on optimal medical therapy uh, based on national UK guidelines. So uh, we were quite methodical about making sure those patients were, were, were selected correctly. One important thing to say is that we did have um, patients who dropped out because of unpalatability of the chocolate and uh, that is something that we will be looking at in future studies, hopefully by um, creating a, um, a tablet form perhaps of flavanol rather than having it embedded in the food matrix of chocolate. Because we're not talking sweet chocolate here, we're talking about no. a really strong, good dark chocolate. Yeah, this is something that you can't buy in the shops and, and the study is not an endorsement for eating chocolate. Um, but <laughs> clearly, <laughs> unfortunately, uh, but clearly, it's um, it's an important uh, it's an important food matrix for flavanol. Um, red wine and chocolate is the two sort of the, the two foodstuffs, if you like, that have the highest content. Um, and we wanted to start off with that, but clearly, uh, it's the flavanol itself that's very important. Right. And y y when you're buying chocolates, uh, it, the, the, there's no indication of how much flavanol there is in the chocolate bar. So this is not definitely not an endorsement for eating chocolate. So Dr. De Palma has given us the, uh, the study results. Dr. Corder, where to now? Well, can I just first comment on the study results sure. and your discussion around chocolate? I mean, we, we've also analysed lots of commercial products, and our high flavanol dark chocolate had a gram of flavanols in, in 50 grams of chocolate. If you look at the average product out there, it's about 250 to 300 milligrams, so a third of, a quarter to a third of what we use. Right. So, so those are, those, you can't think that dark chocolate is the answer. It's got to be a, a flavanol-rich product. The other thing about mechanism, although we don't under, understand that sort of underlying cellular um, mechanisms that are triggering these responses. What's interesting about this study is that on patients with optimal therapy, we see that we can lower blood pressure and reduce BMPs, which suggests we're vasodilating and reducing afterload. Now, that really needs further study in a, in a much bigger population to see, see how that impacts on, on heart failure. Because on most drugs, you, you get to the point where the patients are too vasodilated to up, the, up their doses anymore. So th that, that, I think, is one of the sort of significant clinical findings of the study. What's next? Well, it's, it's obviously to, to work with a, a higher purity flavanol extract and, and formulate it so that we can uh, see the same benefits and then look at it from a long-term perspective. So outcome studies have to come. You know, there's too often studies are done in foods, all sorts of hypotheses are put forward, but they're not taken through to an outcome study. It's got to be fun to work on this. At, yeah, at cocktail novel. parties, you it's, have to have some more to talk about. It's certainly very useful for that. Doctors. No, for sure, for sure. <laughs> I, I think, I think that it, it's actually fascinating because you can put a lot of money into science but that doesn't necessarily create the answers. I mean, we have to look at it, this, the long-term benefit in the patients. And the, it's still a hypothesis that we can treat heart failure with, with flavanols. I mean, that's still a hypothesis. However, there is a history. And Hawthorne extract, which is a traditional remedy for heart failure, is a flavanol-based product. And what was it? Uh, I mean, one of the early drugs in, in cardiology was from a plant. Digitalis. Digitalis, thank you. Yeah, I just bl blanked on that. But yeah, digitalis is, yeah. of course, uh, yeah. heart-related and uh, plant-related. So it is a great deal of fun, and I thank both of you for coming. This is just great fun to talk to you on, on this particular subject. Good luck. Thank you. Thank you. And for CardioSource World News, I'm Rick McGuire. <laughs>